Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Jiu-Jitsu Times podcast. My name is Chris Zahar, and I have a man on the line who needs no introduction. He is a he is a world champion, a Pan Am champion, and a man who is not only famous in his own right, but for the students he's trained. Students such as Gary Tonin, students such as Gordon Ryan, the list goes on and on. Of course, I'm talking about the one and only Professor Tom DeBlass. Tom, how are you today? I'm good, brother. How are you doing, man? I'm doing really well. Okay, so um, you're getting ready for the uh, ADCC Finland, huh? Yeah, yeah, man. Been preparing for a while. We got uh, two more weeks to go. I leave uh, not this Tuesday, next Tuesday, actually, and uh, I compete the following Saturday. Great, great, great. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, training that you usually go through when you're getting ready for a competition and, like, how much it differs from the training that you do when you're just, you know, when you don't have a competition? To be honest, I actually usually shorten my rounds when I'm training for competition because when I'm not training for competition, like, I do something like I did today, like I did a Facebook Live after a seminar today, and I train for like an hour straight, just fresh people coming in. And that's generally how I train. I just train like no bell. I just train nonstop, you know, fresh people coming in on me. But then, you know, if I'm preparing for a competition, you know, I try to make the rounds similar to what the rounds are going to be like in the competition, you know, for timing reasons. So uh, it's kind of like I do more marathon training in between competitions and more sprint training up to the competition. Okay. All right. So you actually you, you shorten them a little bit more. Well, that's, uh, that's yeah, yeah. I try, you know, I mean, so ADCC is ten minute rounds. So I'm, I've been doing more ten minute rounds. Today was kind of like a recovery day, so I did sixty minutes straight, rolling with fresh people. But it wasn't like high intensity. You know, uh, <clears throat> there weren't like you know, um, it wasn't like I wasn't training with like Gordon or or uh, you know super high level guys like that mm -hmm. so i was able to train more and just work on my technique and move and sweat you know, it's kind of like an active recovery day oh okay all right um now do you usually train like a little bit more safely just so you don't like get hurt before a uh, before a competition you know i'd love to say i do but i don't i mean i think my game is generally pretty safe um i don't do anything too crazy but I, I mean, I train hard right up until the competition. You know, I don't like. Uh, I don't really like to take too many days off. Uh, it's a mental thing. You know, if I if I don't train, I don't feel good. You know, I need to be active. I need to be sweating. I need to be doing something. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, are there any guys that like you're really looking forward to facing when you do get to ADCC, or are you just like anyone? Bring it. Yeah, you know, it's not even like I'm like anyone bringing it. It's just, you know, I respect everybody in the division. You know, everyone's earned their way there. They're all so tough. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm I'm happy to compete against all of them. You know, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, who I compete against. I mean, of course, I just want to win as many matches as I can and hopefully, you know, have my hand raised at the end of the day, uh, at the end of both days, actually. You know, it's going to be no, no easy... Uh, no easy tournament, no easy task, but, you know, I'm going in there to give my best, and I don't really worry too much about, you know, or, or speak to certain people, about, you know what I mean, just because everybody's just so tough, you know, and, uh, you know, I believe in myself, and, 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 and I've prepared hard, and I think I have a good strategy that I'm going to use, and uh, we'll see how it works. Mm -hmm, absolutely. What about mental preparation? I mean, you've been competing for a long time. Do you still get like? Do you still get nervous before a match? And if so, uh, what do you do to kind of calm your nerves? I think nerves are natural. Uh, you know, I don't get too nervous to be to be honest. Though, I mean, I will feel them, but I just try to put it out of my mind. Like I'm, I don't even. I'm not even thinking about ADCC. Believe it or not, like I'm thinking about the day that I'm in, you know, so every training day, I'm just thinking about that training session, looking to improve daily. And I'm not like just thinking about ADCC because there's so much to do before ADCC. You know, there's so many sessions, there's so many, you know, trainings that I have to do to where if I just look at ADCC, like I'm neglecting the training sessions that I must focus on to get me to the competition. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I don't, uh, I don't really think about it too much. I, I try not to focus on it too much. I just try to really focus on the training at hand. 
Mm -hmm. Now, um, you said you don't get nervous too much. Um, has this, like, always been a characteristic of yours, or is this something that's just come with repeatedly competing over and over again? Yeah, I've been doing this for a long time, man. You know, I, I won my first ADCC trials in 2009, and here we are in 2017, you know. So, you know, it, it came with time and it came with experience for sure. When I was first competing as a white belt and blue belt, even as a purple belt, you know, I would get those nerves. Even as a brown belt, I would get nerves, you know. Uh, but, you know, I think after MMA and fighting MMA, like coming back to Jiu Jitsu after MMA, like it's pretty hard to get really nervous just because, you know, I've had my face punched in a cage. So <laughs> there's really not much that you could do to me in Jiu Jitsu that's going to really, you know, cause nerves. You know, I mean, I get anxious, I get excited, but uh, not too nervous. I try to enjoy, I try to enjoy the process and, and enjoy the competition itself. And uh, I try not to, if I get nervous, I, I try to ask myself what I'm nervous about. I try to address the situation. And I, you know, I try to remind myself there's certain things that I can control and there's certain things that I can't control, you know. So if it's something out of my control, like my opponents, I try not to be nervous just because it's pointless and it's wasted energy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's generally what nerves are. You're worried about your opponents, right? So yeah. I try not really to focus on my opponents. I just try to focus on myself as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Is that the type of advice you usually give to your students if uh, one of them, for instance, is uh, getting nervous? Yeah, I tell my students, remember, it's just jiu-jitsu, you know, like, it's something we're able to do every day, you know, it's, we're able to simulate the actual competition every day, like, we can't simulate MMA, you know, like, MMA training is not an MMA fight, you know, as intense as it is, it's not an MMA fight, you're not elbowing each other in the face with no pads, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Jiu-jitsu, you could keep the intensity just at a, you know, the same intensity as you would a competition. So, I mean, why get nervous? It's just something we do every day. It's just a chance to do it against different people. And in my case, it's a chance to do it, you know, against the best in the world. And, and that's where I've been now for, for many years, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you ever, do you ever encourage your students to go out and maybe train with other instructors and uh, train at other gyms just so they kind of get, you know, so they're just not rolling with the same people all the time? Because, um, you know, some, some jiu-jitsu instructors, they do get a little jealous. They're kind of like, oh, what are you training with that instructor down there for? No, you're only allowed to train at my gym. Um, what's your uh, feelings on that? I think it's funny just because we have our team, you know, if you're anywhere on the East Coast, I mean, why would you really want to train with anyone other than us? You know, it's me, Gary Tonin, Ricardo Almeida, Henzo yeah. Gracie, John Danaher, Gordon Ryan. I mean, you have, you know, some of the best guys in the world right here. So I don't really feel my students seek out other academies to train at. I mean, maybe, you know, they'll stop in an affiliate academy because Gary has his own school, Ricardo has his own school, Henzo has his own school, of course, I have my own school. So between our associated schools, like, you pretty much got all you need. I mean, we got people from all over the world traveling mm -hmm. just to train with us. I, you know, I had a guy from Australia training with me this week. Uh, you know, he was uh, at Henzo's the week before. This happens often. You know, people come from all over the world. They stop at Henzo's and they stop at my gym. And uh, it's something that, that, you know, I feel my students are very lucky and blessed to have so many world-class instructors, you know, on our team. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that's something I really think about. or I don't really care about it, you know what I mean? But uh, I've, I've honestly never had a student that said, oh, I want to go to a different affiliated school to train because I've had students stop at Gary's, you know, I've had students stop at Henzo's and Ricardo's, and that's welcomed, you know. Uh, so it's not something that I really ever even dealt with just because our, and, uh, we have a lock on, uh, you know, mm -hmm. East Coast Jiu-Jitsu, you know. It, it's, we're, uh, we're pretty pretty solid, pretty strong. Mm -hmm. And just so our, um, just so our uh, listeners and readers know, um, where is your school again? I'm in Forked River, New Jersey, so it's kind of like the Jersey Shore, uh, like southern, like central south Jersey. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
Great. Now, um, you mentioned, of course, you mentioned, of course, Henzo Gracie, and uh, that actually leads to my next question. A um, couple of months ago, there was a huge war between um, uh, Henzo Gracie, Dan and her Death Squad, and uh, Dylan Dennis over some, you know, rather colorful things that uh, Dylan said about uh, Henzo and Henzo's students and all that stuff. Um, of course, recently. Gary Tunnan um, beat um, Dylan Dennis at Polaris, and um, after the fight, they shook hands, they seemed to make up, the tempers seemed to have cooled. So what I want to know is, um, even after uh, everything Dylan said about Danaher Death Squad, about Renzo, and about you personally, um, have your feelings towards him cooled at all, or are you still really like, don't come near me, Dylan, I don't want anything to do with you? Uh, I don't really have nothing to say to him. I'm not going to toast with him and I'm not going to sit down and have dinner with him. You know, if he wanted to apologize to me, that would be welcomed. Otherwise, you know, he goes his way, I go mine. We're both competing in ADCC. I have other things to focus on rather than, you know, attacking him. So it's kind of like, whatever, man, it is what it is. It's done and over with, but am I boys with them? No, not by any means. Mm -hmm. Uh, do I want to be boys with them? No, I have no interest to be friends with them. You know, uh, do I wish ill upon them? No, I don't care. I, you know, I don't focus on it. You know, so it is what it is. I feel it's water under the bridge, and you know, if we're in an elevator together, who knows what will happen? I don't know. Maybe he'll atta maybe he'll attack me. You know, we never know. <laughs> How do you feel about trash talking in um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? I mean, because just because of like Gary Tunnan and uh, Gordon Ryan, they really enjoy doing it. Um, do you think it helps the sport or do you think it kind of demeans it? I think it, it helps and hurts, you know. So, I mean, I think it helps bring attention to the event, but I think it hurts the athlete overall, you know. Like, I'm a guy that doesn't really trash talk at all unless I really don't like you, which I generally, you know, there's really no one that I really don't like, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I'm welcomed and loved everywhere worldwide, you know, like I, I'm giving seminars everywhere, you know, so I feel like maybe if I talk shit, it could be to somebody that is associated with somebody that's associated with somebody that I think it's like burning bridges for me, you know, which I wouldn't want to do. It's not something I believe in personally. Uh, if people want to do it, it's up to them. You know, I know it sparks some excitement, you know. Mm -hmm. I think Gary's toned it down, and, you know, he talks trash, but I think he does in a more of a respectful way now. Uh, I think Gordon still has a lot to learn, mm -hmm. you know, about his social media presence, you know. Uh, <laughs> he's just a boy yet, you know. <laughs> so for me personally, I don't, uh, I don't really agree or... I thought I don't agree. It's just not something that I would do personally. You know, if I'm going to talk shit, it's because I really don't like you. You know, and, and even then, if I really don't like you, I really don't want to talk shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I'd rather not talk. Uh, I'd rather see the person face to face, and you know, maybe talk to them face to face. But talking online for me is just is this punk shit. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. it's not the stuff that I do. I'm I'm a 35 year old guy, man. You know, and I've been I've been in this game for a long time, and not, even, not only jiu-jitsu, you know, I've been fighting since I've been four years old, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's like, there's nothing, <laughs> I don't really talk, you know, like, yeah, you know yeah. what I do. I, I, I try to get along with everybody and respect everybody. Now, you said you've been fighting since you were four years old? Uh, what do you mean by that? Do you mean like a school Like, I've, I've had my first fist fight at four years old, you know? Oh, so it's okay. something that I've been exposed to my entire life, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been scrapping for for a long time, man. You know, so fighting for me is as normal as uh, you know most people. You know, brushing their teeth in the morning. It's just something that is uh, it's the normalcy for me. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm in a much different place in my life now, but you know, I mean, it's, uh, I'm a fighter at heart. You know, it's, it's what I it's what I've been growing up doing. It's it's uh, I've done it professionally. I'm still competing at the highest levels in jiu jitsu. So. <laughs> it's never, uh, you know, you could put a lion in a in a zoo, you know, but you let him out of that cage, and he's gonna he's gonna do lion shit. You know <laughs> what I mean? So yeah. it's like, you know, I'm very re re reformed, and I'm very uh, well spoken and kind. But if you know, for sure, I have that that other side within me, you know. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, you've competed in MMA and, and uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, 30 years ago, mixed martial arts was this underground sport um, that, like, virtually nobody had heard of. And today, it's, you know, playing, it's taking place in, like, the biggest... Um, the, the, the biggest stadiums in the world, like Madison Square Garden, for instance. Um, do you think Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu will ever get to that point? Uh, I think it's growing more and more. I don't know if it'll be where MMA is, but I think it's growing more and more, and I think it's more and more entertaining and more and more people are understanding and knowing about it. Mm -hmm. You know, So I think it has a, it has a chance. I don't think we're anywhere near close to it being where like the UFC would be simply because people love violence. People love to see people being hurt. And that's what MMA does. That's what, that's what mixed martial arts does in jujitsu. Generally people walk away without being hurt, you know, mm -hmm. and it's an art that people must understand in order to really appreciate it. And if you don't understand it, it's hard to appreciate it, you know? So I think it could be difficult if you look at things for reality, you know, for what they really are. You know, if people don't understand jiu-jitsu, they don't really know what they're watching. People don't need to understand MMA to understand somebody's getting punched in their face. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's they love to see. They love to see blood. They love to see people being, people hurting each other, you know. Mm-hmm. Do you think, um, like, certain types of jiu-jitsu, for instance, uh, no-gi jiu-jitsu or the, um, the type of jiu-jitsu that you see at EBI would have a better chance of becoming a spectator sport than, say, gi jiu-jitsu, which is typically a lot slower? I mean, it depends on, on who the fighter is, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, some, some gi matches are, like, crazy exciting, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And some EBI matches, like competitors are learning more and more how to just stall the first 10 minutes and do absolutely nothing and then win in overtime. And that's getting boring now. You know, at first it was a little bit more exciting. So it really depends on the fighter, I think, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's necessarily one style. I think it really depends on the person's, like, you know, like Gary can't be in a boring match. Never. Like, he's just never in a boring match. Um whether it's gi or no gi, like his gi match against AJ was exciting as hell, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So yeah. it really depends on the fighter, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, do you think, do you also think that maybe rule sets can affect that uh, fighter's excitement though? Yeah, because fighters play to the rules, you know, as mm -hmm. they should. So absolutely fighters play to the rules and I think rule sets can affect it. Uh, but at the same time, it's a catch-22 because then submission only, I mean, people are just, you know, if it's just simply submission only, people aren't going balls to the wall from the beginning because they're worried about preserving their energy. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I think every rule set has good points and bad points, you know, and I think it's just it's just par for the course, man. You know, it's a catch-22. Mm -hmm. It really, uh, where, where some rule sets are benefiting, at the same time, others are, are, you know, not benefiting. That other one may be benefiting, and the other one might be not. So it really depends. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay, um, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about um, was, I don't remember how long ago it was, months ago maybe, uh, you made headlines both inside and outside of the jiu-jitsu community for a uh, confrontation that you had at a, uh, what was it, a Walmart or something? Um, yeah, yeah, Walmart. Yeah, uh, it, can you tell us a little bit about the events leading up to that? Like, uh, what what happened there? Yeah, so it's like it's hard for me to be around confrontations without either breaking it up mm -hmm. or like being in it. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I there, it's I can't just watch a fight happening. You know, it, it's I, I don't I can't do it. So I walked in the I pulled in the Walmart and this guy. He was following another guy, like, talking a lot of shit. And the, the guy that he was talking shit to clearly didn't want any part of it. So I was like, hey, man, you know, like, relax. It's not happening when I'm here. You know what I mean? Walk away. Like, just walk away, you know. So he walked away. And when he walked away, I guess he walked over to, like, Walmart, like, where the entrance was. And as I was walking in, I see this guy, like, he has his shirt off and he's, like, pacing. And, like, you know, I'm like, is, he, is this really happening? Like, like, like he's, like, 
coming after me, you know, like, because even if you don't know who I am, like, I'm generally not the type of guy that you look at and, like, you want a confrontation with, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm six foot, 225 pounds, you know, like, I'm, I'm a fairly rough looking dude, <laughs> and, uh, I guess he, he was in the mood, you know, so I, I started, you know, it was funny to me, for me, again, it's not, I don't get it nervous or excited in the street. You know what I mean? Like if I, if I'm gonna get, in, if someone wants to throw down me in the streets for me, I'm not. Uh, I don't get pumped up. I, you know, I think the shit's funny. You know, so if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. Uh, it's not smart, but if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. So I had a guy film it because I didn't know where this was gonna go. Mm -hmm. I quick gave him my phone, but you know, if you look at the guy, he was an older guy and. You know, probably in his, like, late 40s. He was much smaller than me, you know, probably 170, 75 pounds. Like, mm -hmm. I already made the choice. I made the decision that even if I had to put my hands on him, like, if he attacked me throwing punches, I wasn't going to throw a punch at him. I was just going to use, you know, I was going to grab him and, you know, hold him, but not even slam him because, again, I'm experienced, man. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I don't need to lift somebody and slam them on their head and possibly kill them, you know? So I just would have gently taking him down and when i say gently i would have squeezed the life out of him <laughs> but uh you know i didn't I, I tried to avoid the situation i kept distance i you know didn't let him get close and then when i grabbed his hands uh i think that's when I, when he realized you know like what he was dealing with because i have a exceptional grip man my grip is really really strong and mm -hmm. and when i grabbed his arms like even though i was talking very kindly to him i was i was i was grabbing i was grabbing him intensely you know and i think kind of then he's like oh man like there's something not normal about this guy you know so i was able to talk him down and and not have any confrontation and, and you know it ended with the hug and it felt bad for him man you know like mm -hmm. i didn't want to hurt that guy you know there, there, there's nothing i mean maybe if you would have spit on me that would have really pissed me off you know what i mean but like, even this guy if he, if he ended up hitting me in the face like you know i've I've never been dropped before. I could take a pretty good punch, you know. So mm -hmm. for me, I was, it was no big deal, you know. If he was now, if he was twenty five years younger, and he was, you know, a two hundred and twenty pound guy, I think maybe that could have went a little differently, you know. And it also depends, you know, what kind of mood I'm in. Like I'm not claiming to be a saint just because this happened. People need to understand, like this doesn't mean it's always going to happen with me. Like I was in a good mood. I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't irritable, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, I just won my fight to win against Rico Rodriguez, like, the day before, you know? And it's like, uh, he caught me on a good, a good mood, you know? I'm not always in a good mood, you know? So it's <laughs> like, uh, it, 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 you know, it really depends. I'm just thankful in that situation I was able to, you know, handle it with without, you know, aggressing him or physically imposing my will upon him because I don't want to hurt nobody, man, you know, unless mm -hmm. they deserve to be hurt. I don't think he deserved to be hurt. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, nowadays, uh, thanks to the Internet, there's all these, like, street fight videos going around. and um, Makes me it, sick, man. It does? Yeah, I was actually going to ask you about that. Uh, give a, can you give us some of your thoughts about that? Yeah, I can't even watch it, man. It makes me sick to my stomach just because I feel most of it's, like, not fair. I feel like these guys are just inexperienced, and, like, when they knock somebody out or when somebody gets hurt they follow it up with like you know 10 or 15 unnecessary strikes and it's just it literally makes me sick to my stomach i don't watch it you know what i mean like like there's a few things gonna happen in in, in a fight with me if it happens like number one i'm definitely gonna break my hand mm -hmm. on somebody's face 100 percent. and then when i hit their face i'm gonna break their face you know what i mean yeah. but i'm not gonna follow up with 10 to 20 unnecessary punches, you know what I mean? It's just, that just shows immaturity. That just so shows not even, like, lack of compassion. It just shows that you're, like, a mental child, you know what I mean? Like you you don't know, like, it just shows how much you don't know about fighting, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, there's no need to, to, to do that to somebody. Unless, listen, this person hurts your family member. This person does something to really deserve it, you know what I mean? Like... Mm -hmm. Anyone touches your kids, of course, man. Then you're going to kill them, you know? Yeah. But it's like, I don't like these street fights, man, when people are hurting each other. I, I just wish people would stop hurting each other. There's no need. They're fighting for what? For for free. They're not getting paid to fight, and they're hurting each other for, for what? You know what I mean? To prove mm -hmm. a point, you know, to be on World Star. I mean, come on, man. Like, I wish everybody got along more, you know? Because I think uh, so many people have something to prove, you know? 
I have absolutely nothing to prove, you know. So that's why I, I try to avoid confrontation at all costs. Now, it's different. Like, if you're a professional fighter and you're running your mouth to me, mm-hmm. if you're experienced and you're running your mouth to me, well, now you're not You're not just a, a civilian, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, yeah. then there could be some issues, you know. Uh, so it, it it really depends, man. But I, I hate the street fight videos that are out. Mm-hmm. No, I absolutely agree. And exposing our kids, it's exposing our kids, our teenagers to too much. This is just becoming normal to them, mm-hmm. you know? And it's just, this, this violence is not even cringeworthy to these people anymore. To me, it literally turns my stomach, man, you know? Absolutely. No, absolutely. I totally agree. And it also, you know, I mean, you got some kid, he's like, oh, I want to get my 15 minutes of fame. I'm going to go out and fight with some other kid and, you know, risk my life or whatever. So, yeah, no, I absolutely agree with you on that. And, uh, you know, like I've told you before, I always commended you on the way that you dealt with that guy at the Walmart video. You know, a lot of people would have used that as a chance to show off. A lot of people would have used that as a chance to beat the crap out of that guy and then become a YouTube star. But uh, you didn't. And uh, I, I, I really admire you for that. You know, that's funny, man. I wasn't going to talk about this, but I'll talk about this now. Uh, last week, I was at, I was at a gas station. Mm-hmm. And uh, this this younger guy, that wasn't an old guy. I see him. He gets out of his car and he he starts like the gas station attendant had to be, you know, sixty five years old, mm-hmm. skin and bones. Man, this guy was not. He was an old man, and this guy was like, I guess he messed up his gas or something. So he got out and he started doing the gas. He's like cursing at him and talking disrespectfully. And man, like this got me mad, you know, so I got out of the car very aggressively. I didn't get out of the car in such a nice way that I did with the Walmart guy. And I told this guy, man, I said, listen, so you want to disrespect this old guy? I said, how about you disrespect me? You know, like there's nothing between you and me, but air, you know, Mm -hmm. so why don't you disrespect me? You know, and things didn't, you know, it didn't physically, it didn't get physical, you know, Mm -hmm. but at that moment I was very, very inclined to be physical. Right, because I felt that guy was a bully. I felt he was a mean person. Mm-hmm. I felt he was a younger guy that was bullying an old man, and that really upset me. You know what I mean? So, like, that was more. It wasn't going to be a fair fight, but that was more. That was more of a situation to where I wouldn't try to talk him down. You know what I mean? It's like he already made the mistake of disrespecting somebody that was not even on his level. You know what I mean? Like, he was trying to bully someone. So in that case, like, I'd rather him try to bully me, you know, and see how that goes for him. Mm-hmm. You know, would I have stepped on his head? No. Would I Would I have, like, held him on the ground and made him feel like a fool? 100%. He might have caught, like, a few... He might have caught a good few slaps, you know. Uh, maybe a nosebleed, for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, nothing, nothing too serious. But, you know, I don't like bullies, man. That shit pisses me off. No, absolutely. I think it pisses a lot of people off. And, you know, it's just great the way the jiu-jitsu community has uh, taken such an active step in fighting bullying by holding all these anti-bullying programs and stuff. So, no, absolutely. I completely agree with you. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something that needs to be handled. You know, people say, oh, you know, everybody uh, everybody's too soft nowadays. Well, not everybody's built to be a fighter. Mm-hmm. Not that everybody's soft, and if everybody's soft, oh, so, so okay. So why is it that the bullies, if they get slapped across their mouth, what's the problem then? Yeah. You know what I mean? If they want to bully, they should be able to get bullied back. You know, mm-hmm. like I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't. You know, like that guy physically aggressed me. If you want to bully me, I don't care. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Try to bully me all you want. <laughs> You're not going to intimidate me. You're not going to. You know, like, like in Walmart, he, you know, he was coming after me. You know, he walked away at the moment I told him to walk away from the other guy. And then he, then he challenged his aggression towards me. You challenge your, you challenge your aggression towards me. You, you have nine lives. Like, I'll let you, I'll let you talk. You know, mm-hmm. I'll let you get away with a lot. Unless you come within my space, unless you really, really, really push me, you're going to be able to get away with a lot. But if I see you attacking somebody else lesser than you're not going to get away with too much you know what i mean that's just not the way uh it's not the way i work man it's not the way i've ever worked i don't i don't care what people say i don't care what people think if i see somebody 
you know, that is, like we saw that one, that one, the one YouTube video that I loved, the one kid was punching a blind kid and out of nowhere, this dude came and leveled him. I saw he that, punched, yeah. he punched the life out of this kid, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I was so happy to see that, you know? That made me, that made me happy, you know? What I don't like is, like, you know, the, the punching of the blind kid made me sick. But then as soon as, uh, as soon as the other kid hit the guy that was punching the blind kid, I think I, like, I ate an ice cream or something. I got so happy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, do, I do know the video you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, uh, one last question. Actually, I know the last one I told you was going to be the last one, but I brought up a, this kind of brought up another one. Um, you got a kid at your school. He trains at your jiu-jitsu school, and you find out he's a school bully. Um, how would you usually uh, address that situation? Would you like kick him out immediately, or would you like try to talk some sense into him, or like how would you deal with a situation like that? Uh, how old's the kid? Oh, let's say twelve. All right. So, what I would most likely do is have one of my fourteen-year-olds train with him, and probably for an hour straight. Mm-hmm. And just not let the kid quit at all, no matter what, no matter tears, crying, just wouldn't matter. I would tell his parents first that this was going to happen. If they agreed to it, I would let him, but no punches, no, 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 nothing uh, to, you know, like not hurt the kid, mm-hmm. but just physically dominate him and take everything that he has physically, you know, every, every, they say fatigue makes cowards of men. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just totally dominate his will. And then afterwards, I would explain to him, you know, how he felt right there is he's making someone feel like this every day, but even worse, you know. Mm-hmm. I would allow them to, I would let him know that I'm utterly disgusted with his behavior mm-hmm. or her behavior. Mm-hmm. And it makes me sick that I wouldn't even want to look at their face. But they can make a me by changing who they are and being kind mm-hmm. and not bullying anyone. And then... I could love them again, you know, but I, I, I literally can't stand the bullies, man. You know, mm-hmm. I grew up in a tough, tough household. You know, I've been through a lot of shit in my life and I never took it out on someone else. You know, no matter what I went through and I went through a lot, man, no matter what I went through, I never went to school and took it out on some innocent soul. You know, I never, so I don't agree with that shit. People say, oh, you know, this kid's abused. So what? You know, mm-hmm. that doesn't make it okay for this kid to go and bully somebody else. You know, mm-hmm. I've had my fair share of problems growing up, and I never took it out on someone else. So I don't want to hear that shit. There's nothing that justifies a bully, you know. If the, if he was older, like 18, mm-hmm. man, then he's going to train with me. Oh, and then geez. he's going to train with me for a long time, you know. Mm-hmm. And then he's going to see what it feels like to really feel, to really feel a grown man. You know, mm-hmm. you want to, you want to be a bully. Cause when you're a bully for me, that's, that's grown up shit. You know what I mean? When I was 16 years old, I was fighting grown men. You know, I was 16 years old. I was thrown down with guys, 25, 26 years old, oh, wow. you know? So at that time for me, once you're 16, man, for me, I was, I was fighting men, you know, at 14, I started knowing that I could fight with men, you know? Mm-hmm. So if you're saying, hey, man, like, you're going to have a big problem. But, you know, at my school, that's not going to happen because the culture in my school is so anti-bully. Mm-hmm. And it's such about, so much about kindness and helping people and, you know, being the kind kid. I can't imagine a kid in my school bullying somebody. I literally can't fathom it, you know, mm-hmm. because we teach kindness is such a such an instilled quality in my children mm-hmm. to where, you know, I, I allow them to understand how, how bad it can make someone feel, you know, like, uh, you know, I wasn't bullied as a kid. I never took no shit, but, you know, there's times I went to school just feeling like so horrible from other things going on in my life, you know, like the last thing that I needed to deal with was another little prick making me feel bad about myself, you know, mm-hmm. and for me, it's just not something that, uh, not something I tell you. or or what I would do is I would make them watch a video of, a, of another kid committing suicide and make them watch another human being die. Oh, I'd make them watch another human being take their life. i make them watch somebody putting a razor blade across their wrist and cutting their skin. And, and 
you want to be a bully? Are you willing to be the reason why somebody does this to their self? Mm-hmm. Could you watch another human being die? Because that's what you're trying to do when you're bullying people. Yeah. It's real shit out there, man. The world's fucking real. And people don't want to talk. People don't, you know, everybody wants to be tough. Everybody wants to be a bully, but no one wants to watch another man die. No one wants to, it's too much for them, right? Well, why is it too much for you? Why is it too much? If you want to be a bully, you should be able to watch. There should be no problem. You know, so yeah. I'm very much a realist. You know, mm-hmm. let's see what happens when, what's the consequence of your actions? Mm-hmm. So what I would do is I would make them see the, I would make them feel what it feels like to be bullied. And then I would make them see what the consequence of them bullying somebody is. Because yeah. kids are taking their lives every week. Kids mm-hmm. are killing themselves every week because of bullies. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely, and it is a serious problem, and you're absolutely right to address it. Okay, one last question. I know I said this about three times already. (laughs) You're running for school board. How's that going so far? You know, man, I don't have much time to do anything with that right now just because ADCC is coming. I'm Mm -hmm. making DVDs. I'm making instructionals. I'm I'm, I'm doing seminars, you know, and... uh, Come October, uh, I'll do a little bit more with that, you know, and I, and I let them know, man, you know, like some other things came up since I announced I was going to run for, you know, things I can't dodge because I have a family and I have bills to pay, you know, and mm-hmm. there's been a lot of opportunities presented to me that, that are keeping me very, very busy, you know, mm-hmm. uh, so... I mean, my name is in the mix right now, but I haven't had time really to do much for, I mean, geez, my Olympics are in two weeks, you know, and then I'm yeah. going to be gone for nine days, and, you know, it's it's really hard to do much for that at this time right now, but, uh, you know, I was a school teacher before, and, you know, I'm a parent of kids, or of, of a daughter that is in school, so, you know, I want the best for teachers, I want the best for kids, I want the best for parents, that's yeah. it, I don't get involved in the drama, I don't get involved in the political bullshit, I don't get involved in the fakeness, I don't do none of that, so I don't know how, how, how much people will love me in there, you know, because I don't, I don't, I'm not bowing down to nobody, I'm not kissing any ass, I don't mm-hmm. do that, man, you know, I'm keep. I don't care about anybody but the kids, the parents, and the teachers, I don't give a shit about what anyone else thinks. You know, so mm-hmm. if that's something that appeals to people, then they should vote for me. If it's mm-hmm. not something that appeals to them, don't vote for me and I don't care. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely not. I think that attitude will definitely appeal to a lot of people. You know, people like that toughness. People like that stand-up attitude. No, I agree with you. And uh, not fake, man. You know, that's it. I, I, I can't be fake, you know. Mm-hmm. No, that's what people want. They don't want fakeness. Well, I, I, at least I hope they don't. I don't want fakeness. I, I suppose yeah, I can't I speak you, for anybody else. <laughs> and uh, while we're on it, I do want to thank you very much for that uh, Half Guard Domination DVD you sent me. Um, I've been watching it. I used it, and I used it against a purple belt. And I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a stripeless blue belt right now, and I managed to uh, keep some guy of my guard with a, uh, a purple belt in my guard, so... I gotta thank you for that. <laughs> that makes me happy, man. I, I yeah. do think it's a game changer. Thank you so much, yeah, man. Yes. I appreciate you liking it. Okay, well, thank you so much for this interview. I don't want to keep you any longer. Um, thank you, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, um, I, my family lives on the uh, East Coast. We actually, um, they live up in Boston, but uh, hopefully one day I'll be able to uh, take a trip down to New Jersey and uh, do a little training at your gym. Man, you're always welcome. Anytime you want to come through, you have a spot in my academy, man. And that goes for anybody listening to this. You guys want to come through, man, stop by, train. You're going to be welcome with, with open arms, you know. So Absolutely. thank you very much for, for you know, choosing me to, to interview, and I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. All right. You have a good night tonight, Tom. Thanks, Chris. I'll talk to you soon, brother. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.